Um, so I'm Scott Harfield, Head of Research at University Hospital Sussex, and for my sins I've been doing this job for 20 years now. Um, so I'm really pleased this is all finally happening, because I've been banging on it about it for a long time. So, in terms of infrastructure, well, what does it mean? Well, I thought the best place to start is the NIHR's definition. Um, I won't go through all these individual things, because on the internet, but I think looking at what we're trying to develop here, it would be useful to try and aim at some of these um, areas of work and focus what we're trying to achieve on perhaps securing more money for ed experimental, experimental medicine facilities and so on. We do, as has been pointed out, have access to the research design service already. Um, we're involved in ARCs and so on. Um, but there's a lot more we can do, and we probably have the resources to do that. Because if you look at the local picture, as we've said, we've got the JCR has been, been set up, we've got the CTU in place, there's quite well experienced research offices across the organisations, and we have faci physical facilities, just the things that we know of at the CRF in the hospital, the CISC in the, in the university, but there's lots of wealth in, in labs across the two universities. You know, we have equipment that's often unavailable in other places like freezers. Um, in terms of digital systems and so on, how do we enable each other to access things? How can researchers in the universities get access to electronic records of patient data and so on in an easy way? So I think the HRP can bring all this together. But even on a very basic level, if you're working in the NHS, you can't get access to SPSS or something without somebody signing a budget form. So can there be more collaboration going across there? And importantly, we need to look at the expertise and skills across all the institutions, not just in the obvious areas like statistics and so on, but do we know who's interested in cancer policy when we're writing a cancer grant application to try and turn that into a better research project that has outcomes? And then we need to map our networks better and understand what each, each of these is doing. And that's not just locally, but looking at, going back to the infrastructure of the NHR, looking at areas around um, how do we work with other BRCs and BRUs to, to upskill our own workforce and so on. So I think the picture's good, but in terms of the work uh, we need to do, come back to the aims of this, I think we just need to understand this better. Because what's interesting, despite me being doing this job for so long, you know, I only know what I know and the people I know. So if someone comes to me and asks about a certain thing, I can point them in a, in a certain direction. But I mean, this is all local knowledge held by individuals. And I think so we really need to start looking at mapping the breadth of the research that we do, what infrastructure is available in terms of the people, the facilities, and so on. And then in order to do that, we can promote collaborative working. So if we want to try and secure some of the funding, say, for a BRC, these aren't the usual traditional grants that you would write, start with a blank piece of paper and have an idea and then start coming up with a plan how to deliver that. It's about presenting what we're already doing, showing the expertise that we have and the outcomes we've got. And they probably do exist across the organisations, it's just someone in life sciences isn't talking to someone in the policy unit down in the other bit and the person who's on a nice committee in the hospital isn't joining up with those people. So. The general aim of this work stream, I think, is to try and map all of this, which is going to be a hell of a job, really. So I hope there'll be some resource available, Martin. But, um, and ultimately, I think we want to improve the sort of landscape so we can get more funding applications that are successful and increase the volume of locally-led health and social care research. So the initial work um, really focused on trying to understand what was going on with grant applications at the moment. And it wasn't very successful in the sense we don't have a lot of data. So the JCRA has only been in existence for a few years. So, and not all applications flow through the JCR. But from the data that we did have, it's quite surprising that actually in terms of large grants, over 500K, the, the organisations combined are quite successful. I mean, there's a 30% success rate. And the common factor of those is they're all built around large collaborations with other organisations and so on, which sort of highlights what I'm saying is how we need to sort of develop that area of work. But there's less um, success in terms of smaller grant applications going through the JCR and RDS. Um, but there's no sort of 
back up data to understand why that happens. So I think it's important that we start to try and capture some of the reasons these grant applications are failing and so on. Um, we also looked at whether organisations involved in the partnership have peer review processes, but with the exception of Brighton University, there's very little going on. So there's no pre-screening to know whether you're putting the, right, the effort into the right areas. Will the funder actually fund that project at all? So it's, again, there's a lot of cost going into putting these applications in. If you look at all partner organisations, if we're all involved in one grant application, you could have about five or six people contributing just to all the funding side of things and drawing up the, the application. That's not including the academics and doctors who are actually contributing to that. So that needs looking at. Um, and then there seems to be lots of things as well that are duplicated across the organisation. So I'd like to think through the HRP, we could perhaps streamline some of that. We have a joint clinical research office, but we've still got all the organisations feeding into it. So could things like that be done once? So in terms of the next steps, um, as I said, we want to try and review and map partners' infrastructure, identify the stakes, uh, strengths and weaknesses. We need to do this from different perspectives. So as Nikki's already said, early career researchers. It seems at the moment there's very little support for them. So um, unless you get a grant, then you're not really going to access the NHR, NIHR resources and so on. But we need to find a way of doing that because they're the people who are going to live to the future. Um, we need to give better support at the research project design and grant application stage. I think this is about networking the expertise around the organisations to make sure um, we can point people in the right direction. Um, it's particularly important, I think, for medics. They think they can do everything often when it comes to a grant application. They think they do good qualitative research and quantitative research and all these things, but there's someone better at it probably working here. And then there's, a, there's the work to be done at post-award stage. So how can we improve contracting and reg ratio oversight? This is all takes far too long as far as I can see. We need better support for trial and project management. Again, unless it's costed in a big grant, people are just left to their own devices and that's when projects often fail. Um, we need to support the delivery of this research in the NHS and social care setting through partnerships with the um, CRNs and so on, and also help clinical research to deliver bit, um, parts of the project in the academic setting through use of labs and things like that. And I think importantly is we need a better strategy for dissemination and implementation because in all the time I've been doing this I must have set up about 1500 research projects and it's only really since COVID happened that you've seen results of these things implemented quite quickly. I mean, there's been some good papers and things, and one or two changes in practice, but I don't know what's happened to most of that work. So I think this is a key aim that we must not forget about. So that's it from me. Thank you.